Hi there and welcome to my monthly wrap in which I reflect on both the quantity and the quality of the works I've read in the past month. Now in terms of numbers, it was a so-so month. I read three novels and started a fourth. I read two short stories, four miscellaneous works, three of which are of use to my studies and nine journal articles for my class on readings in British and American literary history. Okay, let's begin with the novels I read. The first of these was Sir Walter Scott's The Heart of Midlothian, published in 1818, a vast, sprawling historical romance, the plot of which is not easily summarised, but it centres for the most part on Jeannie Deans, a simple Scottish girl who has to obtain a royal pardon from the king in order to spare the life of her sister, who is awaiting execution for infanticide. It was a marvellous read. Not the best Scott novel I've read, which remains The Bride of Lammermoor, but certainly better than Ivanhoe, which I've already reviewed for the channel. Next up, Orhan Pamuk, The White Castle. This is an example of the world novel. It was absolutely terrible. I've already mentioned its deficiencies in previous videos. I read it only for the purposes of my research. Then, Thomas Bernhard's The Loser. I read this for my series of 12 videos I'm making this year, one a month on Bernhard's works, and it was absolutely superb, just as good as I remembered it being from my first read of it 25 years or so ago. It centres upon the catastrophic effect of Glenn Gould's genius on two of his fellow music students, and it's one of the best meditations that you'll read on art, madness and suicide. Then. The book that I've started but have yet to finish is Mary Shelley's sci-fi novel, The Last Man. Somewhat confusingly, it's set in 2073, but the love stories are very much in the tradition of courtly love, so it has a medieval flavour also. One of the characters is essentially Percy Shelley, while another, his rival, is Byron. It has, just like Scott's The Heart of Midlothian, this vastness which I really enjoy. I just love the literature of the Romantic period, and I can't wait to see in just what direction this novel goes. Now, the two short stories I read were both taken from the same collection, Difficult Loves by Italo Calvino, and the simple yet brilliant conceit that links all the tales in this book is that while love is universal, each of us loves in our own particular way. So in the adventure of a married couple, there is this love which happens as it were Almost in passing, a husband returns from working nights, spends barely 30 minutes or so at breakfast with his wife before she goes off to work and he takes his place in the marital bed. And then there is the adventure of a poet who naturally loves in poetic fashion. There's a master's touch exhibited in these stories. Calvino knows just how many words to place on the page to generate the effect he's looking for. And in that respect, his work does recall that of another Italian master, Pirandello. Now, I read four miscellaneous works this month, three of which, as I've already noted, are related to my studies. Let's begin with the one that's not. George Steiner's Language and Silence, a work of literary criticism. Now, Steiner is a devotee of high culture, trilingual with a brain the size of a small planet and highly opinionated with it. And in this book, he gives his views on just about every topic under the sun. If you want a flavour of his thought, I'll link in the description below to his essay in favour of elitism. It's very entertaining stuff after a fashion, but I'm not about to model myself on dear George Steiner. May God rest his soul. The second book was Harold Perkins' Economic History, The Origins of Modern English Society. And this is so useful literary scholars because it explains how England went from an agricultural society through the Industrial Revolution and presents to you the structure before and after. And it's therefore of great assistance in understanding the novels and dramas of these two periods. The final two books make a good pair. They're both written by women and they're both examples of outsider texts. The first of them is Leonora Carrington's The House of Fear, Notes from Down Below, and the concluding section of this book 
is a first person account of her experience of mental illness and it's absolutely fascinating and in its paranoia it strongly recalls Evening Wars, The Ordeal of Gilbert Pinfold. I'll be reviewing this book in due course for the channel and the second book is Kaneka Fumiko's The Prison Memoirs of a Japanese Woman. This I'm reading for my course on nihilism. What a find it's proving to be. There was a giant earthquake in Japan in 1923 and as part of the cleanup operation the government decided to round up dissidents and execute them if they could on trumped up charges. One such example was Kaneka Fumiko who was born outside the system. Her birth was never registered. She was effectively an unperson and she became a nihilist and engaged in a plot to assassinate the Japanese emperor for which she was duly executed. And I love this quote from her interrogation by a judge. Let me read it to you. The judge asks her, how are you employed? And her answer, my job is tearing down everything that currently exists. Something to add to my resume, perhaps. Okay, this month I also read nine journal articles. They all centered on Catherine Mansfield and her story, The Garden Party. I won't cite the titles here, but if you want to know more about those, you can find all of my reading on my website, link in the description. And now all that remains is for me to choose my book of the month and then bid you farewell. So my book of the month for April is Sir Walter Scott's The Heart of Midlothian. For all its undoubted flaws, it was still a magnificent read. You do have to set aside a considerable chunk of time in order to read one of Scott's novels, but in my experience, it's always been worth doing so. So there we have that. How was your reading month? Why not tell me in the comments below? But now, as promised, I will bid you farewell. So until the next time, be safe, be strong. Nanu Nanu.